Tom, I can see your screen perfectly. Let's get started. Why and when should I upgrade Dynamics GP? Take it away. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate this opportunity and all of you taking some time out of your busy day to uh, attend the seminar. So real quick introduction uh, to myself. So my role at Interdyne BMI is that of a senior project manager. Um, just to give you some real quick background on me and why I'm the subject matter expert on this session is that I am in charge of the um, upgrade team here at BMI. My experience in the past is that I've worked as a project manager now for it's been at least 10 years. I've uh, been working with GP since the late 90s, and my educational background is that in accounting. So I can I can wear many hats and do different things, and I probably should join a circus if I wasn't doing this. But uh, that's my background very quickly. We'll jump into an agenda here. Um, real quick, before I get into the agenda, I just want to set some expectations in that the topic is, you know, when should you upgrade and, you know, why should you upgrade? And so this isn't designed to be a technical seminar, so we're not going to get into a lot of technical specifics. However, there is time at the end for Q&A, and if there's anything that we need to address offline, we'll gladly follow up with you, so it's no problem. But on our agenda for today is, is GP past its best if used by date? Are you having any missed opportunities in your business? Have you outgrown your current system? Are you wasting money? We'll look at timing. We'll discuss the promotion that uh, Kim had mentioned earlier, and then we'll take questions at the end. And we do have five poll questions we're going to put out there, and a little bit of interaction I think is good to keep everybody on their toes, so we encourage everybody to participate. So, Kim, if you wouldn't mind, could you put out that first uh, poll question for me? You bet. All right, everybody. Hold on here for one second, and I'm going to get the polls ready for you. I was telling him that for some reason um, mine came up in French, so now I need to figure out how to do that in French. And hold on. <laughs> that's okay. Not a good thing. So that's not a good thing. So here is the first one. And the question is what version of GP? Are you currently using? So let's go ahead and vote. 20% of you have voted. This is fun. Hey, there we go. Got some people acting on this. Um, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share that information with everybody. You can see a lot of people are on GP2010. So it's great to have you here. 40% of you are. Okay. Perfect. Take it away. All right. Thank you, Kim. So um, I'm assuming my screen is back up, and we're looking at, is your system past its best if used by date? And so yep. now the question, what does that mean exactly? And so we hear this a lot, and we use this term a lot, where Microsoft will say they're no longer supporting something. And that can mean a lot of different things. Um, it could mean, one, that Microsoft literally has said, we're putting this product on the shelf and we're, we're kind of ignoring it. We're not doing any more updates, and it could represent some issues. Other times, Microsoft says they're not supporting something in the idea that, theoretically, it could work, but they're not going to help you with it. And so we have to look at that in many ways. And so on this slide, what I've put out here is Microsoft has basically shelved the products listed here. So Dynamics GP, and I only started at version 8. Um, occasionally I do speak with clients that are even on versions older than 8, but versions 8, 9, 10, 2010, and then as a note, 2013 and support in April of 2018. So it doesn't mean the product stops working, it just means Microsoft no longer pushes out any more updates should there be any issues in the product. SQL Server 2005, SQL Server is the database engine that supports Dynamics GP. And any version being 2005 or prior is no longer supported. And just as an FYI, the current versions of GP require SQL 2012 and higher. Windows Server 2003 and prior are no longer supported, so Microsoft's no longer pushing out security updates to those versions. Windows XP and prior. And then Office 2007 security patches end in 2017. However, as a side note, GP 2015 requires Office 2010 or newer, 
and GP 2016 requires Office 2013 or higher. So what does that really mean to everybody? And, and a lot of times what that really means is it's opportunities. So sometimes we look at changes as being risky, but really risk presents a positive side and there are opportunities there. So we want to secure vulnerabilities. And what does that mean to you? Well, security holes. We hear about it all the time on the news. A company gets hacked, some information is lost, customers get upset. Well, sometimes there'll be one standalone system in an enterprise that doesn't get updated and that's where the hole exists and that's all these bad guys need is this one hole to get in your system. And so we want to make sure that we use this opportunity to secure these vulnerabilities. Also, too, we want to utilize new technologies and features. What does that mean to you? Well, in GP, there's been a lot of new features, which is a separate seminar coming up. But just as a preview, GP has a whole new workflow engine. Email has become tighter integrated within GP as, long as, as well as the entire office system. Dashboards and BI reporting is all tighter integrated into GP. Lower administrative overhead, that's a, a big statement, but what does that really mean? A lot of times people take the opportunity to look at their systems that are still what we call on-premise or they're actually in your facility and they'll take those systems and they're looking at upgrading them and they're thinking, well, gee, we have all this overhead. Why don't we just put it, quote unquote, in the cloud? And what does in the cloud mean? In the cloud means usually there'll be a secure facility that you don't have to maintain. Someone else maintains those servers. They do the backups. They have the latest technology on them. And again, it's that opportunity to move away from the old and get into the new. Kim, I've got another opportunity here for a poll question, if you wouldn't mind. All right, everybody. Has your GP system been upgraded before? Five, four, ah, looks like everyone's voted. All right, so let's go ahead. And the answer is no. All right, older versions and not upgrading. I'll be darn. All right, there you go. All right, so we've got a lot of people just exploring upgrades for the first time, so this is a good session to attend. Um, what are the hidden costs of not upgrading? A lot of times people don't realize a lot of these issues that come up. So let's take a look at these. So first off are missed business opportunities. And this is coming from a lot of experience working with many clients over the years. And so what does that mean? Well, I've heard people uh, talk about adding EDI. And EDI is typically, uh, we'll have clients that will have to talk to um, Costco, have to talk to Walmart. Um, and that is done with this EDI solution where information is sent electronically, paper invoices, per, uh, paper purchase orders are not used. And if you've got an older system that's no longer supported, often it's very difficult, if not impossible, to deploy those systems. So that could be a missed business opportunity. Also, too, there's uh, sales tax. I hear of a lot of clients that will get audited by their local sales tax authority, and there's been a lot of great promotions lately to add sales tax automation into GP. Well, if your system isn't current, that's another lost opportunity. Incompatibilities. A lot of times these are applications in the background that we don't even see. There's uh, Program programmability by Microsoft in the background often we refer to as .NET or VB. And because there are older versions of the servers involved, a lot of times those versions cannot get updated and it does relate to the vulnerabilities and also to the deploying of other solutions. So it stops us dead in our tracks where we have to stay stagnant. A lot of times I'll, I'll give people this visual reference of think about what cell phone you used back in 2008. And I'll bet, and we don't have a poll question, but I'll bet money that probably none of you are using that cell phone you had in 2008. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, why are we using an old version of GP? Payroll tax updates. Um, that is something that Microsoft is not updating. So if you're on a version prior to 2013, there are no more tax updates. You would have to do those manually. Support. Old versions of deep GP do not get support. We support you. But Microsoft basically closes the door and says, if you want support from us, it's a consulting uh, engagement. It's not part of the support plan. Promotions. So there are promotions that come up all the time, whether it be from Microsoft or from the add-on vendors. And with having an old version of GP that's not supported, you cannot take advantage of those promotions. 
And so that's a hidden cost where you cannot save the money on those promotions. All right, Kim, I'm going to keep you working. So uh, we've got poll question number three right now. All right, what's your role? Go ahead and vote. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Well, with 80% of folks voting, it looks like most people are classifying themselves a little bit more on the generic side here of 50% in accounting. Okay. All right, well, this is not a picture of me. That is not a good picture. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be judgmental, but... Uh, the visual here, the point is, have you outgrown your current system? And actually, my goal in creating this slide was trying to find a teenager that had clothes that were too small because they're outgrowing them, but I found this poor gentleman. So he will suffice to be our, our GP system that we're outgrowing. And so some of these are similar to what we've just talked about, but we're talking about outgrowing the system rather than a business opportunity. So in other words, if you need to add users or solutions, if you're on an old version of GP not supported, and it looks like our group here today is on 2010, you cannot purchase a new ISV typically. You cannot go to Microsoft and say you need new users because they will only issue the registration keys in the new version. You can't put them back in the old version. So um, there's a lot of issues there that people don't take into account. All of a sudden they'll hire somebody and they'll think, uh oh, I cannot add a user. Slow performance. Um, over time, your system gets bigger. Um, there's new technology that comes out we're able to speed those things up and a lot of times it is that opportunity of maybe moving to the cloud or getting a new server and we want to take advantage of that. Missing features. Um, there's a lot of new features added in every version and so if we don't take advantage of those then we might need that to support our new our current business and so we just physically outgrow the GP system. Alright Kim you're on again. We're going to keep everybody going here and we want to keep them active. So we've got poll question number four. All right. How soon do you anticipate upgrading GP? And again, we announced this education going on and also a promotion that uh, has some incentives for you to get that great education. So let's go ahead. It looks to me they're not sure yet. So let's keep learning. It looks like... Uh, Folks are kind of dead even when it comes to the other ones. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully this will help out a little bit because nobody likes to waste money. And so how can I quantify this? Well, I think we're all familiar with this. When you purchase GP, we have what we call an, an enhancement fee. And that enhancement fee is brought on by Microsoft or the add-on software vendors. This is not something that BMI created. And what happens is we pay these fees once a year, and it's based on the set list price of the software you buy, and it's due every year. And by paying that, we actually get access to the new version of GP, which is a great thing. But what happens is if we're not applying that new software, it's kind of like insurance. Nobody wants to get into a, an accident, but we pay that insurance, but we don't get anything out of it. Now, in this case, though, we're paying these fees and we get software presented to us. Typically, we'll get service packs maybe every six months, but new versions will come out annually. And so in this case, we might be spending $2,500 a year. And if we look at going from version 2010 to version 2016, that's $10,000 we've spent roughly. And we're not using any of the software at all. And, and that's just money being wasted. Also, too, there's a licensing transition, and this is something your account managers could be uh, very good at explaining to you, but what I mean by that is, and especially anybody who's leaving from version 2010, once you go to a version over 2010, Microsoft changed its licensing model. And what does that mean to you? Well, Microsoft actually did this in your favor. What they did was they basically unlocked Pandora's box and they made the licensing model extremely simple. And so when you transition from 2010 to 2013 or greater, you go into this perpetual licensing model and they basically unlock Pandora's box. There's very few features you do not get and it depends on what version you were on in 2010 because there are different, uh, different versions. And Kim, I don't know if you might be able to help me there, but I think there was, uh, was it advanced management or am I going too far back? 
or something, those different versions. As far as what are you asking? Advanced? The uh, version in 2010, the licensing model, there were what, two main versions? Yes, everything changed with 2013. Okay, so in 2013, basically there's a starter pack and extended pack. That's right. And there's, we're not looking at itty bitty pieces of GP. It's kind of like if you use project accounting, manufacturing, any of those pieces, they go into this extended pack. And basically the rest of GP is for the most part unlocked to you. So making this licensing change opens up a lot of new bits of software to people. Especially for HR uh, and payroll, Tom, is one thing that people are starting to bring it in-house. Guess what? In a lot of cases, you own it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Light it up. And now here's the hidden feature is free solutions. A lot of people don't realize it, but there are a lot of uh, parties out there, and there are these add-on vendors, and they make great solutions for Dynamics GP, and a lot of times people don't realize some of those solutions, they, they entice you to look at what, they want you, what they'd like you to buy, but they're free. There are actually free solutions you can put into GP, but if you're on an old version, you can't get those. And actually, Microsoft even released what they call the Professional Service Toolkit or Tool Library. And those solutions used to cost, I think they were bundled, they were over $10,000. Microsoft now includes them for free. And that's a huge, huge thing. And that's uh, things like changing account numbers, changing vendor numbers, uh, customer numbers, things that you normally could not do in GP, you can now do with this tool. So, Kim, guess what? Poll question number five. Here we go. So which one are you considering to upgrade to? Yes, we do have GP 2016 out there, but is that where you're ready to go yet? Go ahead and vote. 60% of you have voted. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, 80% um, gave us an answer. And it looks like people want to move to the latest and greatest, Tom. Oh, very good. All right, so we're up to timing. So when do we do an upgrade? What's, what's the right time to do that? A lot of this really is based on what worked for your business. So if you have a seasonal business, we'd want to do that off-peak. So if you're busy, people getting ready for the holiday season, a lot of times fall, late summer is not a good time to do that. So we would want to look at a time when we're not going to impact your business. So that's one driving factor. Also, too, you've got perhaps auditors coming in a certain time of year. Maybe you've got trade shows or certain cyclical things of your business where we want to avoid doing an upgrade at that time. So we want to find the down cycle. And if you're not a seasonal business, then guess what? Any time could be the right time to upgrade. It's just a matter of finding the right time perhaps in the month to do it. When your team has the availability, so it's kind of the same items I was just discussing when sometimes you'll see that people have a lot of vacations planned in the summer, so that might not be the time to do it. Um, tax season, auditing, same thing. When is your team available? When can they do that? And sometimes we have to think outside the box because we've got a lot of accounting people, of course, on this call. So we have to look at the whole enterprise. Who's affected? You know, is the warehouse affected? Is there a project team that's affected? What about management? We have to look at all those different groups of people who are quote-unquote customers in this upgrade. As Kim indicated, GP 2016 is available. Uh, we typically look at that window of 90 days out is when we start performing those upgrades. However, we can start planning them well before that time and then just schedule the actual live upgrade. The reason why we tend to put out this 90-day window is, one, we don't like to be the, the cutting edge and be the first ones to uh, check things out. Also, two, if there's any add-on vendors, typically they've got a 90-day window to... Uh, put their solutions out there, and we're already hearing from some vendors that uh, they're very close to validating their products. And that's a key thing, Tom, is an average GP user has five ISV products, so it's very important to work with our project managers to look at that timing and make sure you can do it all so that uh, the lifting is uh, a little bit easier. Yes. Also, too, this promotion we talked about, so starting by August 31st, uh, if you want to save some money, so why don't we take a look at that promotion in more detail. And guess what, Kim? I don't have a poll question. All right, so our promotion. So upgrade now and receive a complimentary what's new in GP session. So first what we want to do is we want to have this discovery call with you. 
and the statement of work must be signed following the discovery call by June 30th. So we still have plenty of time to get those scheduled. We've got, what, about 45 days to do that. And then we've got this one new session will be delivered in one web session up to two hours in length within 10 days of your upgrade being completed. So a lot of opportunity there. And if you want to do that to get the process started, we would just like you to send an email to info at Interdyne BMI and put in the subject, I want an upgrade. My contact info is below, and again, I'm Tom Santoro, and it would be nice if I spelled Interdyne BMI correctly. <laughs> I just noticed that, and I apologize. It's not inter, it's inter. So uh, I misspelled that, but that's my contact information spelled incorrectly. So basically, at this point, we can open this up to questions from the audience. And again, on the right-hand side, there's an area called questions. Type those in, and we'll get them addressed right now. Here we've got one from Brian. It says, is GP available on Azure Cloud, and does it work with Office 365 Cloud? Are there any concerns, Tom? We do deploy GP and Azure all the time. And Office 365, from everything I've heard, is compatible with GP 2016. And I have not heard of anything that would preclude you from doing that. I haven't either. That's, but it's very common. Yeah. Yep. Teams work very close together to make sure that's done. Matter of fact, that's all headed up by Errol Shanefish. Um, and so uh, I, I think you can feel pretty darn comfortable. They're not going to release it until that's a done deal. And just real quick to explain that a little bit more, because um, a lot of people use these terms, and Microsoft, <coughs> excuse me, is real big on marketing things and, and not explaining them. So uh, every time, <coughs> excuse me, Azure is brought up, a lot of questions come up. What is Azure? Well, basically, uh, Microsoft created a cloud platform, which is basically a hosted server. So we take the server out of your office. It's sitting in a data facility somewhere, and quote, unquote, that's the cloud. And Microsoft has put a marketing spin on that, and they call it Azure. So Azure is not a whole product per se. It's just it's Microsoft's hosting solution. So just because Dynamics GP is a Microsoft product, you're not limited to hosting in Azure. It's a great solution. We definitely recommend it to a lot of clients. But we can put GP basically in just about any cloud solution. So I want to make sure that we're clear that there's not a limit to using Azure. Kind of uh, uh, in reference of uh, terminal services and or looking at like a Citrix environment is something that people are, are probably a little bit more aware of. Um, this is Microsoft's solution. Correct. Yep. Excellent. Well, I don't see any other questions um, in the queue. I want to ask you a question, Tom. Now, in leading this group, um, I've heard that we're at any given time working on around 200 upgrades um, at a time in different um, aspects of the project. So we're, we're professionals and we are experts at it. Um, in getting prepared for an upgrade and taking advantage of this, what are some of the things that I should do to get my house in order while I get engaged with Interdyne BMI? What would be some of the things that would be helpful for your team in getting a great kickoff? Well, definitely it's looking at your current system. So if you've got uh, an internal IT person that can gather information about the system, um, if there are any current outstanding issues, any tasks of things you needed to complete, um, we definitely want to know those ahead of time. Um, looking at pieces of if there are customized reports, we'd want to know what those are. So it's, it's just doing kind of a, a self-diagnosis of your own system, any information you're able to gather for us in advance is helpful, but we definitely do that for you, and that's a that's free of charge. So the discovery process is not a fee, and so I encourage anybody that's looking at doing an upgrade to reach out to us, and um, we'll we'll be able to help you with that uh, initial estimate. And we do our best at um, having your ISVs listed within our system and also Microsoft system, so that we also know that because that's a a part of the whole process is so if there are um, instances where you have um, some 
um, IP out there that works with GP, we need to know that as well. And, you know, another thing, too, I'm learning more and more about um, some of our auditing, and it's a good time to kind of take a look at when you are upgrading is to really look at systems because a lot of people here were on uh, GP 2010. Well, when you move forward, you're going to need a newer release of SQL as a good example. And so we really do need to look at the whole picture. And we've got uh, software and systems and um, ways for us to do that review so that we can tell you what needs to be um, updated all at the same time so it goes without a hitch. So really, really good to understand what, what's in your environment. And in addition to that, I mean, a lot of people take the opportunity to kind of look inward. In other words, um, I, a lot of times on an upgrade, not only do we do the what's new training, but we'll get a request maybe to spend an hour or two, and there might be some points where it's it, those pain points where we take the P off and we call it a gain. So where can we gain? And we'll do a little bit of a process review and maybe it's payable. Sometimes people ask, well, how can we have such an issue with putting in a purchase order and then matching it to an invoice and then cutting a check? And sometimes it's just a question of there's just a little bit of reinforcement training needed. Maybe there's been some turnover. And so it's a great opportunity to take a look at that process as well. A fun number to go as an example on that, Tom, when I led GPUG and worked with Microsoft, statistically an average user is using only 30% of GP, 30%. And just what you just said, it's that process improvement. It's maybe what they were taught by Charlie or Joan when they started to do accounts payable, as an example. They don't realize that there's a whole lot more capability. And during upgrade time, it's really great to do those audits, to do the efficiencies and understand that you can do emailing of invoices. You can do a lot of things that are with later features of GP that are going to save you in those processes and, and make it much better so you can get out on the pontoon earlier in the day. So really, really important for you to uh, just take a look and figure out what needs to be done and, and how can I improve. Definitely. I, I'm putting on the screen here again, my, my email address spelled correctly. <laughs> there you go. Nobody, Hello. I'm better at upgrades than I am creating a slide deck, so that's okay. <laughs> I liked your pictures. That was great. Well, I would like to thank you, Tom, very much for this education. Again, the whole purpose is why and when. You know, when, when should I be considering this? It's not just when Microsoft's making the push on the next feature set because they worked real hard at doing it. Um, the other part of it is, is just really taking a holistic view of what you can do better and how you need to fine tune and move forward. So thank you, Tom. Very well done. Really do appreciate it. I've got some um, pings here from folks saying thank you, great information, and I think you accomplished our goal from today's webinar. Now, again, we have another webinar coming up on the 26th with Sandy Wickman, who is a product manager, and she's going to go over highlights of some of the great features that are available in GP 2015 and 16, so you don't want to miss that. So come on back, and thank you, and thank you, Tom, for your time. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.